Welcome to Face the Facts. I am your host, Nick Face. Joining me to my left today is our assembled cast of characters. Character number one sitting in the center square is... Uh, I think the only character here is you, but well, <laughs> that's up for debate. Tom, Tom Smith, welcome to um, Face the Facts again. And we have Phil Healy, program coordinator here, mm -hmm. NorCam TV. Before we begin, this is our first show since uh, Thanksgiving, so we hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving holiday. We're now into that lovely holiday season, so <laughs> it's going to be crazy, 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 as it always what is. What people so. like to say. Did you yeah, both yeah. have a nice holiday? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, it was actually very nice, very low-key. I got to relax Mine for too. a couple yeah. days, too. Oh, did good. you, too? Yeah, yeah. Relax. We didn't, we didn't nice. have you work too hard, did yeah, we? No, I, yeah. Did you guys work during the... Um, the weekend? No, we, we, had Black um, oh, Black. we had Black Friday. We had the Black Friday programs Friday program. and we had a few oh, okay. birthday it was, it was parties. Good. It worked out really well. Oh, um, speaking of our programs, before we get talking about sports and all, we are in our lovely home here of North Reading. And I just wanted to put a shout out to um, our, our organization of Fit Revolution in North Reading. We are, are doing a lot of different programs and parties over there. It's been wonderful to come back to uh, the North Reading community again and do some great programs for the kids. So. Shout out to you guys. I just want to say thank you, and we hope to see you at some more of these programs coming up. Um, let's talk about some lovely things with sports. The last time we saw you, Red Sox won the World Series. I mean, that was just unbelievable on how that all kind of, about a month ago from right now, sitting yeah, here, that's yeah. when the whole Roughly, thing yeah. came together. And what a ride it was for them. Now we're officially into that Celtics and Bruins and Patriots, and I feel like we haven't talked about any of those three teams since the start uh, of the season. I seasons. don't know yeah. when. So but a little more Patriots than others, but yeah. A little bit more yeah. Patriots, but the Bruins, everybody's kind of taking that back seat because yeah. of your champs right there. Naturally, of course. But I asked this question to my group of kids today at one of my programs. I go, "Who is the hottest team right now in Boston sports? Who do you think it is?" Well, I mean, I And the key thing is obviously right now. Yeah. I I mean, I haven't paid too much attention to the Celtics, so if it's the Celtics, well, then I'll be wrong, but I'm going to say it's the Bruins. Who do you think it is? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even say the Seeds or the Patriots. It's definitely I mean, not the Celtics. I'd say no. the Celtics have got at least a C, if not C minus grade. As far, well, I mean, as far as being hot, what is your definition of just everyone's talking about? Or Yeah, who's, what are you talking about the most right now? Who feels like they have, in a way, right now at this moment, the best team? Oh, the best team. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the Patriots might. I think oh, it no, has think, to be the Patriots, though. I think the Celtics have the best team, but yeah. they're underachieved. They, no, I mean, I think. Now, yeah. that's completely agree they've underachieved. I think that's an understatement. But the saying Pats that. are probably in the better position. And it's amazing because if you go back, maybe when that bye week happened two weeks from now, oh, I don't think we'd me. even say the Patriots would be the best team in the city. I think we'd say the Bruins at that time. Oh, yeah. How many did they rattle off, like, at a time? For the Patriots or the, or the Bruins? The Bruins, yeah. the Bruins uh, what, let's talk about the Bruins first. Why not? Why not? Well, we'll just throw it on out my there. Favorite team. Here's the story about the Bruins for this season so far. What did you say? A man named my, Brady? My, my favorite, favorite team. team. <laughs> <I know. laughs> the Bruins have had a, I'd say, a pretty good start to their year so far. Wouldn't you say so, Tom? Yeah, Tom's absolutely. more of our hockey guy. But I'd say from just looking at it from afar, the biggest problem with the Bruins is health. They've got so many guys right now hurt. Starts with Bergeron, goes to Chara, goes to McAvoy, who's been out on defense. Now Kevin Miller's out. Got a puck to his throat on Monday night. Yep. Um, oh, wow, really? Oh, it, it's been Ooh. His first game back from his hand injury. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> what what are your overall opinions on it? Uh, it's like the MASH unit. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, they've uh, come out on top in a couple games in overtime. Yes. Um, they've lost a couple tough games, tough fought games. Uh, they battled out really well. Um, they almost beat Toronto, who is probably, well, other, aside from Buffalo, Toronto's probably the hottest team in the league right now. Mm -hmm. um, they almost beat them. They lost by two goals, only, well, on an empty netter. Um, and I just love from back after the – Last week when we had the Thanksgiving, we had Friday night's game, which was against the Penguins. They played great against the Penguins, got the oh, win. The Penguins and are then they, a crummy season. And they year. turned around on Saturday night, and they beat in one of, I think, the best games of the season, that arch rival Montreal Canadiens. They put them to sleep real quick. Um, it was one of those kind of old-school feeling games. Yeah. You had some blood. You yep. had some fights. Mm -hmm. You had 
A lot of hatred out there. I can't wait till the next game. You had the Rock'em Sock'em Robots, as Jack Edwards likes to say, out there. It was an excellent win. Do you remember at the end of the Canadians game what Jack Edwards' call was at the end of the game? Because I remember I tweeted it, and it was so good, and I forget what it was. I forget what it was, too, it was but I awesome loved it. It was awesome what he said. It was some of the best commentary I've ever I'm heard not, I'm assuming game. that you hadn't, didn't hear it. but <laughs> I got a T-shirt made out of it. You got a T-shirt <laughs> out of it? Okay. Got him in the I, back. I, it was ready. pretty cool what he said. If oh, we think he, about what it I was. I do like Jack. I, well, I think he's great. It was, great, it was something along He's the, very entertaining. Yeah. It was something along the lines of, like, oh, get ready for the next game. like Because they were, they were fighting each other. They were in a scrum. The entire – both teams, basically. We're in a scrum, and I mean, well, not both teams, but I guess all six guys. Something about guys. oh, we and they put and they put them to bed. Good night, good night, Canada, or something like that. We put you to bed, or something like that. Oh, wow. Something like that. Did but that get was, get back to the Canadians, or who knows? Oh, blame wow. Canada. As remember Damn. that song that Robert Williams gave up blame Canada. <laughs> but moral of the story here with the Bruins, they got to get healthy. Um, they start another game uh, Monday night. They played the Toronto Maple Leafs. That was a tough loss that they had there. A game where it was kind of back and forth, but defense killed them at the end of the game there. You've had really good goaltending, I have to say, from Yaroslav Halak for the most part. Tuka has been better. Yep, he's improved. Um, he's improved in the past month since he's come back. I think if they get healthy and they get players back shortly, they're going to be a, a tough team to face in, the, in hockey. Well, I mean, if you're battling one of the best teams in the NHL right now and you only lose by two goals, one being an empty netter. Yep. Um, I mean, just imagine what this team's going to look like when you get Bergeron back, when you get Char back, when you get Mac McAvoy back, when you get Carlo back. I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but when Krug was hurt and then he came back, it was like they had a whole new pair of brand new skates on their feet, every single one of them. They were flying around the ice. The power play looked ten times better than it was. Uh, before when Krug was hurt. Um, and, I mean, the next game is against a crummy Islanders team who they should easily beat. And you said uh, Donato's come Ryan got Donato back got up, recalled, so, so we'll he was from Providence for a bit. Now he's back up. That should add a, um, a little stability for offense a little bit. Hopefully. Hopefully, so, my, so long as they can put the puck in the net. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's the biggest loss of the Bruins right now? Who hurts them the most being hurt? It's... I know it's a combined force, but who is it? It's always going to be surprised. Who I'm going to say? I am. I know who you're going to say, mm -hmm. and I don't want to. And say it's crazy it. to say it. I don't want to say it. Well, because, it is unfortunately. Because, well, no, because the biggest loss is Bergeron because he's a big key on the penalty kill. That I and, agree on. But and, what's hurting them the most right now? It's Chara. Chara being out has hurt this team quite a bit. Because as much as we feel he's 41, 42 years old, whatever they say in a uh, Russian age is. I mean, we don't feel he is. They, they miss him. Sure. Well, they don't have that big presence. They don't there, have the yeah. big presence out there. They don't have that, that skilled veteran that knows how to do his job, that helps the young kids kind of jump into the fold there. He was taking off a good amount of minutes. And now you've got to rely on minutes for guys like... Um, Connor Clifton, yeah, Jay Loz Lozon, um, Tory Kru Tory Krug's posting big minutes right now because he's the only he's the only really veteran on the on the in the defensive right. core now that Kevin Miller's out, which you know got hurt and that was his first game back from his hand injury, there it so is. now he's out again. Yep, Carlo's been out a couple times this year. Yep. Who's the other defender that's being slotted? Who's usually a three or four? Who's now a one? He's on the line one now. What's his name? Matt Grizzlick. Thank you, Grizzlick. But he's yeah, been playing one. very well. He's been playing very well. He's, he has to. Um, he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, true. He doesn't have a choice. But I mean, I what mean else that's, he do? that's showing that's showing Bruce Cassidy what a kind of a player he is right now, and that's going to make it tough when the other guys come back. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, any other surprises if, that you if see? If you're gonna if you're gonna say Char is a big loss, I would have to say McQuaid was a big loss in the off season. Yeah, I could see that because, too. Because I mean, with Char out, McQuaid would have been the next big presence. Yep. Was he um, traded or did he get injured in the? Uh, I just don't think he was brought back. Oh yeah. No, he was. Uh, he was either traded or he was signed by another team. Yeah. Might like, have been. Yeah. I forget which I team he was signed by, right but that. he was either traded or signed. Looking at the rest of the NHL. Are the Bruins 
do you think are going to end up being one of the best teams once they return to health? I think they will be in playoff contention. What are you surprised about the most right now from what you've seen? I mean, it's early, but are there surprises? The standings. (laughs) Okay, so explain those. Uh, So in the Eastern Conference, you have Buffalo leading the way right now, which is the biggest shock because if anybody uh, remembers that there's a Buffalo Sabres hockey team, then you would know that they were usually in dead last or, you know, holding up Why the bottom Why have they the been league. so hot right now? What's it from? Or who is it from? Hmm. Uh, is it Eichel? I would just say uh, better leadership. I think it's uh, having a young captain like Jack Eichel. I think okay. it's having a guy like... Um, that defenseman that they got. Yeah, his name's good. Um, I, I, I Darlene, Ras, Rasmus Darlene. Okay. Oh, um, okay. I think he's been a big help news on News to there. me, right? You too? Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is all news to me. <laughs> did you even know Story time did with you Coach Tom is lovely. Did you even know there Buffalo? Please, come on. I know the Buffalo yeah. Sabres. Back in my day with Dominic Hasek, who would make yeah. a Ole say Now, there's a everyone. name. Yeah. That's a name. Okay. Dominic Hasek. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, We're going to give Phil some points. Yeah, yeah you got, got to give him some points. <laughs> That's all I know. Uh, where's the scoreboard? Yeah, <laughs> put you. the scoreboard. <laughs> Slightly knows some stuff about hockey. Right. Um, but the biggest surprise, I mean, and, and Toronto's in second, and then Tampa's in third. But the biggest surprise in the Eastern Conference right now is Pittsburgh sitting pretty at 11th place. Oh, weird. <laughs> you think they're going to say goodbye to um, Sully? The head coach? No. I, I think a big key in that was Crosby was hurt for a while. I think yep. he was out for like a month. Yep. Um, Seems like he's getting hurt more and more. He's more. getting up there. He, though, should right? have, he should be getting hurt more and more, more too because he's the biggest pansy in the NHL. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sid the kid. Um, I mean, they got, they got lucky to go to overtime against the Bruins. The, the Bruins got hurt uh, with the penalties. And Malkin put the dagger, almost put the dagger through them, um, which I'm not surprised by because mm-hmm. when they had the when they were on that last power play that tied the game up, I, as soon as the puck went on Malkin's stick, I knew he was going to score. Um, but I mean, I thought Nashville was going to be running away with the West, and now they're only up a, by a point on Colorado. Mm-hmm. So I mean, a lot of surprises in the standing this year. In the standings this year, I mean, do you think it will hold or? I mean, that's kind of the thing. It's only like the quarter of the season. I, I think I think the Western Conference is going to hold more so than the Eastern Conference. I think the Eastern Conference is going to be fluctuating a lot, in the, especially in the next upcoming months. But, I mean, the Kings are in dead last in the Western Conference, which is the biggest surprise to me because they've always been fighting for that last spot every season for, like, the last 10 years probably. Um, but... Toronto and Buffalo are definitely, like, shocks. Surprisers. Well, Toronto, we knew it was going to be a pretty decent team after, of course, they had the big offseason with um, signing John Tavares, John Tavares yeah. and all. So we already knew that was going to be a little bit of a rivalry there. But honestly, it's so raw and early in the season, things could change from everything. And all I know is we hope that the Bruins do come out and get healthy Hopefully, can get rolling and and have another nice I mean, season. As of right now, the Bruins are in the playoffs. So coming up shortly too for the Bruins, he'll be retiring our Rick Middleton. He was number sixteen. Was that correct from the Bruins? I think sixteen is going to the Raptors. Yes. Yep. yep. So that'll be coming up soon. So um, mark your calendars for that. Shifting gears, we're gonna stay in the Garden. This time we gotta put the parquet down though. I don't know if the parquet should be down, though, for the Celtics this year. because what, they, Should they play on the ice? Is what we're they saying. might actually be playing better on the ice, to tell you the truth. <laughs> they call it the slip and slide play. Well, that's the NBA. Shoot your three and say a prayer it goes what? in. I am sick and tired of the Celtics' approach with sitting at the line and shooting a three every damn time they get a chance. What is so wrong with driving to the basket Trying to get the the ball in the hoop, first of all, but then also trying to get the foul. It's the same freaking play. Well, it's all it's about the combination of uh, trying to do. I mean, do that's right. one thing that's irked me this year. The mm-hmm. other thing that's irked me, I have to say, is the amount that's gone to the head of Tatum, Brown, and Rozier, thinking that they're superstars. Give me the ball. 
No, they don't deserve the ball. It's been a very disappointing start of the season for the Celtics. They're I mean, a 500 team right now at this point as we close out almost a month till uh, December 1st. That's crazy. Here's like a team nine, that was yeah. supposed to be expected. And granted, it's early. I get it. Here's a team that was supposed to be, oh, Golden State and the Celtics. Here they come. Here come the finals. Am I wrong? No. Yeah, but who writes those, who says those things? Uh, media, know, media yes. people. And I know Brown ate it up a bit, but it, yeah, they're going to get it figured out. And even if you watch the last two games, more uh, or the last game against the Pelicans, which was a great game, I watched that it. one, and I, yeah. and I love the difference. It, it was a great, and you could see it's all about the effort. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you're going to go into how <laughs> that they just have. I mean, besides them chucking up the ball, not really giving it on the defensive end. That's where they've been losing. Well, when I when I was growing up as a kid, I was always taught to drive the basket, sit under the basket, wait for a rebound if you don't have the ball. It's oh, it's well, it was always to go to the basket, go to the well, net. That was in the 1920s, Tom. So yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, man. yeah, look at my gray hair. It's, yeah, I'm looking like Gandalf right now. It is a different game. <laughs> you white wizard, you. <laughs> it is a different game, even from back from the 90s into the 2000s. It's yeah, a completely no, different game. It's a but no, yeah, and some and teams are better equipped to it. To do it than others. So. To me, but you it, it, it's, a fr- a it, it, it's no. becoming more frustrating to watch and sit through it and to see the different game call that's there. I- I'm disappointed to say the least. However, am I and other people who are expecting the Celtics to come out of the gate, you know, pretty pretty good? Am I wrong to be critical? I mean, I don't know if you're wrong to be critical, but I mean, yeah, criticize them all you want, but it won't yeah. change anything. No, I'm not. That they do. But uh, you're wrong to not think, like, the problem isn't necessarily always checking up the threes. The problem is stopping other teams from making threes. Mm-hmm. I think what they've been doing, and they've been horrible at, in the games that they've really lost the grip on, like the game against the Knicks is a perfect example. High picks um, and switches. They were horrible at switching. I mean, mm-hmm. watch again. Like, they, a lot of times they wouldn't fight through switching. Mm-hmm. Pelicans game, you can see them. Just putting a little more effort in, like being more uh, reticent when it came to high pick and rolls by other teams, and just you know uh, chasing people off the three ball or three point. Um, I'm assuming you line. saw the game from Monday. I did too. Yeah, the Pelicans one. Yeah. You talked about the intensity, the more of care. I would say the more kind of into the game. What changed? I mean, they've been trying to. I mean, Marcus Smart, who is, I know, one of your favorites, but he is, he is now. Yeah, well, no, he's always been a favorite of mine, and people, I know you have said it to me, and we've had this uh, delightful and I've changed my opinion on him. No, he is. I have. Listen, and I understand yeah. because he can, he's one of those guys that, as Bill Simmons would say, he's like, oh, no, oh, no, no, oh, yes, kind of guy. Well, he'll be like, what are you doing? Stop taking, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe I'm Bill Simmons. <laughs> no, but uh, my, another buddy of well, mine, Ben. And no, you're Captain Critical. Captain <laughs> Kangaroo, too. Um, CKC, Captain Kangaroo Critical. Or Critical Kangaroo. Critical of Kangaroos. At least I'm or, not A, B, C, D, E. I mean, you could be. I mean, that'd be a great name to have and then just be like, hey, it's pronounced Epicetida. And just get so incensed by it. But, but regardless, no, it's. I think... This, we'll, I mean, we'll explain well, that in a minute. Yeah. Coach, we, we, Tom, Tom needs the wet sheets. That's but. Right. <laughs> oh, don't mention wet sheets. That brings back a whole slew of memories. Oh, no. Me. I mean, get the wet sheets oh, as right, in. Right. It's time oh, to get them out of here. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> no, I... I the seat, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, you were going to say about the seeds? Yeah, I was going to uh, oh, recite no, the smart. alphabet. Um, yeah, Marcus no. Smart. Man, you guys I got you good. Uh, Marcus, Marcus Smart <laughs> being into the game on Monday yeah, he was completely in changed the dynamic of the Celtics. And I think you're going to see that lineup with does, Marcus though. Smart being, in, uh, being a starter. Yeah. I or, don't like and I don't love how Gordon Hayward is now the quote-unquote bench guy, but I don't think that he's ready yet. Well, even when he is ready, he should. Like, listen, if you, Andre Iguodala, yep. a all-star. Six-man, right? A six-man six man of the year. There's no shame in being a great, uh, uh, being a great six man. And this is kind of like the thing that I think is more uh, to play into maybe what uh, your criticism kind of lays down. I think they're getting too much out of like what they should be as a role player. Like a lot of players, like you know, Jalen Brown needs to do X, Y, and Z to get here. Tatum needs to do X, Y, and Z. Rozier needs to do X, Y, and Z. 
And, you know, people, sometimes if they're, maybe not if their heads are too big, but just like you bring in new people, especially Hayward, because Hayward hasn't been filling that gap that maybe we thought he should have, but, I mean, he should, a guy off the bench would be great. If you think of a second unit of Hayward, Smart, and maybe Rozier, and then you have maybe Barnes or Len Al rotating in and out, and then uh, Morris, or even, like, put Morris back and forth between... Um, the starting lineup, and uh, I mean, you have a lot of guys you can play with. It's kind of a weird thing. I mean, you have eight legitimate people that could be a start. Could yeah. probably be starters on another given team, oh. pretty much. But what I am concerned with is, I'm not so much concerned with Hayward. I'm more concerned with with again the Rosiers, the Browns, and, and yeah. the Tatum's because I feel in a way that they are scared and a little nervous that whenever they get the ball, they feel they got to take a shot with it because they have so many other people that they know that also kind of have to get the ball and get their points and everything like that. Sure. I think the number one person that's impacted this year has been Brown. The amount of shots that he's missed from the three-point line has been scary. Sure. And I mean, speaking I, of scary, I would argue scary Terry, there. who's yeah, more, of a, is more of a not-so-scary person anymore, um, has just been a shell of himself. Yeah, I think he. Uh, I think you. Rosier, I would say, has been probably the most disappointing player on the roster. I think he's been the most, disappoint, most disappointing and the most kind of like that needs to work on. I think Jalen Brown will be fine. Yeah, because he'll do. he'll uh, he'll do what he needs to do to grab the ball and run the because he's one of the most athletic ones. You could argue between him and yeah. Tatum, but uh, he when he gets the ball in the open court, he can just like that and just make his way to the basket. Rosier has a certain kind of swagger to him, a sort of confidence that. I personally think he has not had since the season started yeah. because Kyrie was back. You have Gordon Hayward there. You have not as much room for Rozier to be a starter because that's basically what he was when they went down. He yeah, was yeah. a starter. Yeah. I just don't think that Rozier was, is somebody that wants to come off the bench and do something. So I think he's one of those people that, sadly— He might have to go, yeah. Might have to go. He might have to shoot him in to the sh- back. To shake up the team yeah. there a little bit. Um, because you're going to see Marcus Smart, who, yes, he really shouldn't be a starter, but because of his intensity and what he offers to the team, they need him the most right now. I think he's one of He's the, probably one of the most valuable members of the team Oh, he always, right he, now. He always, he always has. has yeah. yeah, no, he always has. He yeah. has a great basketball IQ. Yeah. Uh, and I will say this. I, I love Kyrie Irving, but he can't pass uh, for the life of him. He can't uh, throw a bounce pass underneath the basket to Al Horford. Nope. And Al Horford has, like, nope. cement hands. Like, whenever he tries to grab something, he's like, yeah. oh! Like, it's like if you were trying to play basketball with Hulk hands and just, like, pick up the ball. <laughs> you're like, oh, no! <laughs> like, every time I see him, like, bounce it to Al. And, I, and sometimes it's under duress, but uh, Irving's got to work on his bounce passing. I, mean, I think they got to work on of, like, everybody playing together better, yeah. I would say. Yeah, sure. That, that, that's what I've just noticed from but afar. I, that particular one just weirdly irritates me, which is like there's yeah, like does. a bounce pass. Well, yeah, because Kyrie either wants to go up for the shot or throw it yeah. out to the arc. I mean, I mean, look at how many games that Kyrie... I mean, Kyrie has definitely been their most solid player throughout the season, I think. He's been most prolific yes. scorer. And if you look at the numbers, I mean, he's got some 30s and 40s on the score total. But when you see somebody like a Tatum with seven... Yeah. Or if you see like an Al Horford with two points and somebody else maybe with 11. There's not enough ball movement. There's not enough distribution of the basketball yeah. that shows that we're here as a team. There seems to be too many, too many chiefs. What's this saying? There's too many chiefs and not many Indians? Or is it backwards? No, no. Oh, what? I know. I've never heard this. You at haven't all. heard that phrase but before? But I, I understand what you're before? saying. Too many, too many like people. Not enough too many players. eyes, not too many. Yeah. Wees, I wheeze guess. Teams you need more wees than eyes. <laughs> this so. is getting disgusting. There's no eyes in a <laughs> but, There is no eye in a team. If it's yeah. a team effort, and but you're there not is, seeing but there is enough a of a team so. effort. Yeah, and I saw that a lot at the game that I went to oh, against went to Orlando, like, oh, no, Orlando a month ago. That's and I mean, he went to the when game. I go to the Celtics <laughs> games, I'm bad luck. But any, anybody else, I'm, I'm good luck. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, Kyrie put up 22, Horford put up 15, and then everybody else was like under 10. Yeah. Well, just, I don't think they know, don't know, yeah, sometimes I don't think they know when to shoot. I think that's kind of the weirdest thing where, and you know, people uh, name, chiefly, well, besides Michael Hawley, who I like Michael Hawley a lot, and he ma- brings up a good point, not enough people are criticizing Brad Stevens about this. They're not. No. And They're he, not. I agree on that. He needs to kick in uh, the well, behind. They passed the ball like three times as soon as they like, or like, twice after they 
yeah. cross the half court line and then they put up a three. More, the majority of the time. Yeah, and that's you need to drive to the basket to open stuff up. You I need mean, to drive to the basket. You need to pass the ball around more, make smarter passes. But they, yeah, and they have been in a lot of other instances. But I also think like offense isn't always a problem. It's you know when you can't score 110, or 120 a night. Like the whole NBA is like defense is is down a bit. I, I guess it's maybe a trend for every sport right now. It's kind of like the NFL. Mm. NFL, yeah. I don't know. Is the NHL right. kind of like is it it's, it's more offensive nowadays. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the pace quicker. is picking up more, yeah. which is I mean, It seems to be kind of the error, but for the Celtics, they're about 500 at this point, about 10 and 9 December right 1st, now. 10 yeah. and 9. I've been watching. Is there a move that's needed to shake up the team? I mean, if you like you said, if you traded Terry Rozier, you're not going to get much. Uh, you could. You could get, I mean, you could throw it at, I don't know which team. Like, you could throw it at maybe a Sacramento. Uh, no, not Sacramento. Well, maybe Sacramento. Who's on the list right better. now of the Celtics wish list? Who, who, is, who is wanted? I think it might be an addition by subtraction. I mean, honestly, you need a, a, a rebounder to come in for, like, your second unit to, like, really learn. I mean, because you go between Barnes. I love Barnes, too. Barnes is actually does pretty well. He's another guy in the smart category. Yeah. Who has, Charles Barkley was right. The opening night of uh, the season, they all laughed at him because they're like, oh, and they, they handily beat the Sixers. But yeah. Barkley's like, yeah, they only have one guy. They only have one guy who does the dirty work, Barnes. Yeah. You need more people yeah, like Smart does. and Barnes to do yeah. the dirty work. No, you do. You know. Speaking of Barkley, he fixed his golf swings too. I don't know if you oh, saw no. that. It's, oh, yeah. it's a one fluid swing. Oh, well, yeah. hey, good for him. He needs it. I can see like I yeah. do like Barkley, but I could see like the gut going with. Oh sure. Like the Trumpian, <laughs> like whoa. Each each step through the. <laughs> it's terrible. All right, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. All right. Some more, he can get some more work on the mini golf uh, courses. Right. Um. So yeah. Right is there. Anthony Davis a name that needs to be talked about or no? I mean, we can, he does need to be Here's my about. question He's in general. Incredibly unqualified. Would you trade Kyrie Irving for Anthony Davis straight up? Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, then, you, then you're thinking put Rozier in that spot and then do yep. that. Honestly, if, if, they, if they let go of Kyrie, because I don't think Kyrie is a leader leader. No. He's kind of that, that guy by example, sort of. Like, I don't even think he wants to cling to that. Who's more... If you want to I think like long Kyrie. term, if you want to think long term and think how how is the Celtics team going to be able to win a championship, we've seen evidence that Kyrie can't win yet without another big person there, like LeBron. Sure. I just look at it and say, you know what? If I'm going to do the trade, I've been back and forth on it, and I think it benefits the Celtics more if Anthony Davis is brought in. You know, it could. And if I you mean, trade Kyrie, I like Kyrie, but I just see him more as a a selfish kind of basketball player. I think more he's, about him he's than an, more about the team. He's. I think he. I don't think he's selfish. I think he doesn't know how to be that vocal leader. I don't, I don't think, think he. Does he I don't think either. he desires to. I don't think that's the worst. But that's kind of what uh, the team needs a little bit. And but Kyrie is one of the best finishers in the NBA. He is one of the best. I totally kind of will you, agree with that. It's one of those. It's one of those. Yeah. Give and want? take. It's a yeah. give or take. It is got, there's, there's goods and bads that come along the way with it. I don't think you need another big man. No, is, I don't think you do either. Thing. I don't think you do either. And you just need to see Gordon Hayward get more healthy and rhythm. Yeah. Because that's needed. Second unit. I mean, yeah. that's where they'll need him. Yep. Um, we're going to shift it over to the Patriots now. The Patriots, again, they're at 8-3 and three at this moment in time of their season. And I'm kind of surprised with it because, to tell you the truth, it's not one of the better pa- Patriots teams there's been in, in, in past years. I will completely throw that out there on the table. It's been a struggle since the first game of the season. The good side of it, because we're a positive show here, we like to make sure we speak positivity here. The positivity (laughs) side, or the positive side of things, is Gronk is back healthy. Sonny Michelle came back, and he seems healthy. He had a little bit of a scare from the last game. Julian Edelman seems like he's okay. They got back Shaq Mason to help booster the, uh, the line up front. Brady looks like he's... He's Brady. He's is what it is. Um, they're on probably their best health streak, knock on wood, since yeah, the start of the season. Um, that, that that just uh, it goes to show you that in the rest of the NFL, there, even though the Patriots team isn't that great, the Patriots have a chance again to be in the playoffs, to be hopefully in the AFC Championship game, and 
could potentially be back to the Super Bowl. The rest of the NFL, I'm sorry, is just not very good. Really? I don't think so. You have the Rams, Kansas City, and the Patriots, in no, my eyes. I and would, New Orleans can New be or up there, too. Well, New Orleans is definitely Those are your there. four teams, I think. Uh. I think I think they're better. Well, I, I mean, who, teams, who would have thought it would, New Orleans would even be up there at with the start of the season that they had? Because they true. didn't have a very good start of the season. Then all of a sudden, the then all of a sudden, yeah. they win like one or two, and then they beat the undefeated Rams, and all of a sudden they're woo, let's yeah. let's take off and be a good team again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem with the Saints, we know, is they choke. So they you totally you usually don't win the big game. Well, if Breeze I, only has one Super think Bowl to his the ring. Choke, I don't know if the, I don't understand the, why Sean Minnesota Payton's choke? still the coach. I there. don't either. I just really? don't think Sean I, Payton. He's not. And I also think that. I don't know, man. Can you explain? If you were a Green Bay Packers fan and Mike McCarthy was still your coach, what the heck is wrong with them out there? Well, I a bunch think, of cheeseheads. Well, I think also oh. Rodgers is a big problem. Who is? Rodgers is a big problem. H- horrible. Well, he horrible season. He, he never checked. He never checks down. He never passes to a. But like is he rarely that more a of a Rodgers problem or a systems problem no, with Green Bay? No, but it's there. If it's there and he chooses not to do it, then who who is it? He like does. That, he that does call game, a lot of audibles. Yeah. That game on Sunday against the Vikings was, you know what? Very I actually important. saw a little bit of it. I that was their excited. season, yeah. and they lost. A lot of people's seasons are being decided like, well, unless they're in the N- NFC East, then you kind of, if you're three and five, uh, three yeah, and who eight. knows who's going to come through in the yeah. NFC East. I'm but just, I actually disagree with you on, I think there are a lot, uh, I think Seattle's a great team. Seattle's going to keep getting better. Like, uh, what they did to Carolina this weekend was pretty nuts. I think the Titans are only going to get better. They might seem like, and Mariota isn't the best, but I mean, I think defensively and how they keep going, I think they might be able to. Until a team does it, it out. until a team does this in the playoffs and can beat the Patriots from something, I'm going to give the Patriots the upper hand. I'm mm-hmm. still am. So there are a lot. There are a lot of good teams and fun teams to watch. But yeah, I think maybe. I mean, look at the Patriots Bears. Patriots have this not year. been a very fun team this well, year to watch. I will tell you that. The Bears. What are they? They're like the Bears six came and out of completely nowhere. Yep. Two. Yeah. But overall, they, I don't know. What is your, What are your overall thoughts on the Patriots? Uh, when you it's said just, eight and three, and you said it aloud, I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem like the Patriots at all. It doesn't seem like it. Well, no, it, it seems like a very and oddly coming from us and you know from our tower on high. It's that's a week eight and three. But it, that just shows how. But in GD the end, it, it, it could be a thirteen and three. Yeah, it could be a thirteen three. It could be a twelve and four. But uh, they do they do have a couple uh, tough matchups. Yep, we got the last Steelers coming up. We have yeah. the Vikings. That's going to be the Vikings. The Vikings are coming yeah. up this week. You have the Steelers in a couple weeks. Yep. Miami's going to be tough And you still have these too. divisional games. You got Miami, the Jets, and another game of Buffalo. And you know what? They're always tough. And no matter whatever you want to call it, ten can. So you got. Vikings, after that, Jets. then it goes the Jets, then yeah. it goes the Steelers, Steelers. The Jets Dolphins, then it goes yeah. Dolphins, 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 Bills. I mean, I, I, Dolphins, Bills. I'd take yeah. those. So we have five games remaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I would take those uh, AFC East opponents any day, but they're still tough, and you still wear yourself down. I think the Patriots are going to go 12-4 and four on the season. That's my thought. Who do you think they're going to lose? I think, that, I think one games. of the games will be Miami. Do oh, gonna I think Miami. it's going to be one of the games in Miami. I th- I think the toughest game it'll be or a divisional game. I see. Yeah. I think the Patriots will get the Steelers. I think the Patriots will be, be fine against the Vikings. Yeah. That's just my overall opi- thought. I think it's going to be twelve and four. Patriots will end up being the two seed, so they'll get that by and they get the home field at least for the first round. Second round, I think it's going to come down to a Kansas City. Oh, you don't think they're going to get the two seed? I don't know. No, that's. I mean, that's. I don't know. Hey. That's the question. If it's twelve, if it's if it's thirteen the and three, they do. Are, yeah. If it's thirteen and three, then yes, they do. Um, I don't see the, well, Chargers, the Chargers getting the second well, seed. But the, the Chargers, Chargers are, are just team. known no. to choke. Yeah, and Melvin Gordon they're, is out for the Chargers now is too. Is he out for the season, or is he? He's he out might for a couple be. Games. He might be. Oh. Wow. So that's a question but they're eight there. They're three, and they're not like they're nothing to scoff at. I mean, no. What's it? Philip Rivers is actually usually pretty good in the playoffs when they make it. And they've got I look at the Chargers as another example of the Saints. They get that they have yeah. a great regular season and then when the playoffs come, it's just it's well, they just usually like get the get right the Heimlich on. maneuver. Especially right. when Antonio mm-hmm. Gates was playing. Right. They were outstanding in the regular season and then they couldn't mm-hmm. do anything. Right. In the playoffs. The deal. What do you feel? Do you feel what do you feel? I feel nothing. I'm stoned. stoned. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm but sorry. no, it's all right. But I, I actually think Brady is not has not been playing well at all. I, I agree. There's, he's been thrown at knees and legs. 
I, there's, is that a Brady problem or is that more of an offense problem? Oh, I mean, he's, I mean, he's the guy who is the I mean, I, he is. I, I feel like he's looking more for the deep pass or the mm-hmm. handoff instead of trying to throw the short passes like he used to to Amendola or Edelman. Like, I mean, Edelman caught his longest catch of the season this past weekend. Yeah. Oh, the 30 yard. Yeah, which you never see from Edelman unless it's like a catch and run. Yeah. Or like a 10 yard catch and run. Um, oh, but yeah, I mean, he's, he seems to be trying to get the deep ball more and more now. And I don't know if it's because, you know, he's all of a sudden shocked that his offensive line is actually holding off the pressure, <laughs> pressure or if he just wants to test out Josh Gordon more. But, I, I mean, it, 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 it just, it's, it's, he, I haven't seen him sneak the ball in, since probably the third game of the season, third or fourth game of the oh, season. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. He's been handing it off on fourth and ones or fourth and inches or whatever, yeah. or he's been trying to throw the deep ball. I there's I haven't seen this isn't the same Brady that we are used to. Did you guys it's hear his press conference man. at the end of the game from the uh, from Sunday? No, no, no. He talked about the importance of the Patriots having a run game. Yeah, I've never heard him say that from before. He he has said that in in other and yes, areas. Sonny Michelle has helped mm. with that. I I completely agree with it. But I'm saying to myself. Brady saying that about a run game? Usually he's talking about connecting with one of his receivers and sure, all stuff, yeah. stuff, something like that. So I was, I don't know, I was taken aback a little bit by that, by that conversation, which means, okay, maybe the game plan here has shifted a little bit. Maybe it's, because I, I will say they've become a lot more run dependent this year. When Michelle was in the game, mm-hmm. I mean, they've been giving him the ball quite a bit. I think he had about 100 and something yards in this yeah, last game. Of, yeah. He had a nice game. Um, but, you know, you're also going to be returning back Rex Burkhead if he stays healthy. He's, he's yeah, coming he's back. back. He'll be this back. Week, I think. Yeah. He's so active. You, you're going to have a, a, some, some significant guys that are back that could run the ball, you know, any given time. Or catch in the uh, – Burkhead was a great catch. So you uh, may Green see Park. these yeah. last few games here that the Patriots have in their season not – Traditional Patriots, Patriots, Patriot S games. Yeah, none of us can talk. That. None of us can talk. Tongue today. twister. A page, so Brady's maybe still that's like a good a yard thing. Or two short because maybe when you get to the playoffs, that's rushing. when the bag of oh, tricks wow. comes out, yeah. and that's when you see a little bit more of the connection with, you know, the Hogans and the and the well, Gordons. And, and that and come, uh, brings up Tom's point again. Reinforce the point. Like, are they waiting on? Are they just testing the waters of what they have now? Wow, they get ready I, for the I playoffs, honestly think they are. Like, I think they are testing the waters. Because at this a point, bit. this is kind of like what, what do we got? Yeah. I, mean, like, I think that's what they're saying themselves. Yeah. What do we have here so when we get to the, you know, the big games and the big stages, we can pull out some of these things and know, okay, we can score and win. Yeah. I think that's what they're doing. Because they always, you know, you know, they don't show their hand completely. That's always kind of. I like, don't think we've seen and, anything really shown. And it hasn't. Yet. And it hasn't Not really. Much. It hasn't really um, looked like a hard-fought battle to try to like get a win back if they're down by say 24. Yeah. Um, because I mean, when you're looking at Brady, he it's not when he misses a pass, he's not looking as frustrated as he usually is. It, so I mean, your your point, your theory makes a lot of sense in the way that they're just looking at what they have in case the going gets tough. Um, but I mean. Because, you know, they're usually throwing the short passes. They're throwing the screen plays. It's, they it's don't really of... look like the Patriots this year, do they? No. 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 And it's, 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 it's and weird I'm starting, to see it. I'm starting to think that maybe Brady is contemplating retirement. Which I think he should. I mean, but. I, I think that the number one person who I think this will probably be it for is Gronk. Yeah. I think this is the end. Well, they don't double him. They didn't, haven't doubled him in the last and like, couple games. And if Gronk's ending. Been. I'm thinking Brady's walking too. I mean Brady. I mean he's done it without Gronk before. That's the thing, you know. I mean he's been able to. But yeah, I think Brady but he's now also realizes. Had Randy Moss and, I mean, look at the well, game. Yeah, what? What? what a, Randy Moss. I mean, this he, past yeah, weekend was a testament to me in looking at. Okay, you had Gronk back on the field. Brady was able to connect with Gronk <laughs> to get the big touchdown from stuff. Something that hasn't happened really all season long. Hmm. So Brady must have been happier, at least, knowing that he had somebody back there he could trust to get the ball to. I think he's been more frustrated, though, to say the least, on how it's been this season. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really show like it It's not does. showing, but I'm thinking that... 
I, I just see some, some something something showing me that he's got his head kind of out the door a little bit, or his feet out the door a little bit. Well, I mean, it comes... Understandably so. Let's just... Understandably so. I mean, I, I, I thought he was going to play until 45. He still yeah. might, but... Yeah, he should, I mean... I just you don't, I don't you don't see the, I don't, don't see, see the, the same team passion lining lining him yeah. lining Brady up to play past his full, past age you, you don't know, you don't really say see the same passion that you no. we you, you are used to, but here's my question for you: Do you think Brady's going to hit a thousand career rushing yards? Well, he's at what ten? Like, How many does he have to go? Like I think like no more than five. I think it's like two or three. No, I don't think he will. I don't think he will. I don't, I don't think he cares about it, honestly, mm. to tell you the truth. I don't think Belichick does well, either. I mean, he doesn't really care about it. I mean, he never really pays attention to those stats. No. So he no. probably doesn't Maybe he know. will, maybe he won't. If there is know. a part when he needs to go for that first down and it's like, oh, my knees. And he just like, eh. I guess the cane, I guess the walker out and just goes for those two yards. I think it, I, I mean, I think he got like two rushing yards in like the last game that he ran in. Mm. So I think he has one more. But I don't know. No, I think I think he has one. If he can go for like a couple of yards, I think he might scan. He still has that kind of like a little he bit does. of spryness. But we're gonna wrap up before we do that though. Every year around this time during the holidays, what we like to do is we like to call it the tree of giving, the giving tree, if you'd like to say. Mm -hmm. Each of the four Boston sports teams, we allow, we are allowed to pick a gift for our, each of those four teams. Could help them. Could do something from it. We're going to go around here to see what the gift for each of these sports teams would be. So we're going to start first with the Red Sox. You've got to pick a gift off the giving tree and give that gift to the Red Sox or the Red Sox organization. What would it be? A contract for Mookie Betts. An extension. Yep. Okay, I like that. What do you give? Um, the giving tree. What does the giving tree have for the Red Sox? Another outstanding season next year. Lame. It's already going to happen. <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, yeah. we yeah. thought that was going to happen with the Celtics. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Um, my gift on the giving tree is uh, Nathan Avaldi. Nathan Avaldi mm -hmm. being signed to a nice contract by the Red Sox. We'll see in a couple with of weeks. With also the Mookie yeah. extension there, too. I would say those are the two biggest things that the yeah. Sox need to mm -hmm. do. Um, Chris Sale's name probably should be up there at some point, too, but they might want to just go for the year and see what happens. Um, the next team we'll go to, we talked about them first. We'll go with the Bruins. Bruins first on the giving tree. We're going to go to Tom since he's already in black and gold. Healthy roster. Full, full healthy man roster. Uh, it's definitely necessary. It's, but, I mean, it's, I don't know. I think they'll be a, a ten times better than they are now with, with a healthy roster. So you give them health. Yeah. Phil? Uh, I will say, because I know very little about this season, cheaper seats for the fans. Okay. Because that actually, that's an easy one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, didn't they go up in price again this year? Or They always do, every team. Yeah, they yeah. always do. But it, <laughs> yeah, but you both are like... Mine are diapers for Tuka Rask. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm only kidding. Tuka Rask... You <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the Pampers are done. He's now into the big boy pants now, so he's not... He's a, he's a big kid now. Um... <laughs> So what's your wish? Uh, my wish you is for defense. We need a defenseman. We need defense either come back with health or to somebody come in there and be the big clog. So not clawed, the clog. So that way <laughs> the box uh, goes. Hope, I hope Claude doesn't come yeah. back. Um, let's go to the Celtics. What do you give the Celtics? Uh, the gift of being more of a bruiser. Okay. The gift of not allowing. More Marcus Smarts. More Marcus Smart. Yeah. But also, like, Marcus isn't as much. He can be a bruiser, but, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, like, if. If Drew Holiday or if a uh, point guard is driving down the lane or uh, uh, Brea, uh, the backup point guard for Dallas Mavericks, is constantly going down the lane and he's free to go down that lane, someone has to just come up and jump in his face and be like, no, he can't do that. And like, like, respectfully, you will get pummeled mm -hmm. if, you come, if you feel freely to come down here. You might get a shot off, kind of, but you're not going to be freely come down. Mm -hmm. uh, more rebounds. Yeah. Rebounds. I like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. I, I haven't yeah. seen a lot of rebounds taken from by the Celtics this the, year. The last game, I will say, was more of a kind of, and I agree, like they weren't, that's the thing, they weren't like rushing well, to the basket. Well, they put up the three and they, and they like, kind of, they say a prayer and they run the other way. Even like, but even like down low, if they were just like playing around and like last game, there were a lot of more putbacks, a lot more, but I can go on for, 
for hours, but sorry. Um, for me, I give uh, defense. I give just total around defense mm -hmm. for the Celtics to just play better as a unit, defend, and play better as a team. So that's my gift there. Patriots, last gift, what we got to give. Uh, better special teams. Yeah, special think. teams have been terrible. Yeah. It's, terrible. Yeah, it's, it's the kickoff that's coverage. One, that's But that's what Belichick was kind of like the 2001 team. I remember like they had a fantastic special team. That's weird as that sound. But and it's it, surprising it's been like that because usually Belichick oh, spends what he tons of time on, yeah. on it. Prides himself so, on it, yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree on that end. What do you got? Uh, I'm going to say a better fourth quarter team. Oh. Okay. They haven't really been no, the they same really fourth haven't. quarter team that we're used to. Nope. Um, and that, it's more so defense, but the offense could always use a little push. I'm just going to put it real simple. My gift is another Super Bowl. I, you know, as, as yeah. obvious and as kind of dumb as that would well, be. I didn't want to steal that idea no. from you, but I was <laughs> going to say that, that too. I, that idea right <laughs> as there much as you chastise him for the. I would like yeah, this right? to be like, another lame. one of those revenge yeah. tours in a way for the Patriots when yeah. people said, oh, they're done. Put a fork in Brady. The dynasty is over with that. I could see it happening. I would like to see that finger in the face mode for the Patriots a little bit. I mean, I don't think they. I don't think they need to. I think they don't need knows. to. But I think anyone that says they're done. It, what is, a what a telling statement is wrong. Would be. Yeah, <laughs> but this time <laughs> they, if you go been to wrong the Super for a decade. Bowl, like actually blow out the team and not have us have to yeah. throw remotes and go to have temper tantrums outside and. But can't they, believe that happened. But can't believe they're down twenty eight to three. But that was the most. How Sorry much fun. to my neighborhood. No, it's all right. I was. I imbibed in so much at that point. I was just happy. Uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, they lost. What are you going to do? We're having a good time. There's a conga line. I'll join yes. it. Yeah. But then it was just kind of like, what? Things are happening. Like, Ad yeah. Adelman catches the ball in his yeah. feet and, like, roll, does a somersault. Oh. <laughs> but that was insane. But I do, like, we haven't had that, like, blow, uh, you know, cushy a blowout. We yeah. never, we, I mean, we yeah. never really had a cushy Super Bowl We've blowout win. We've no. never had one. So, I mean, I can't really complain about Even the, the Red Sox, yeah. Yeah. even though they were up as many games, it was very stressful. Yeah. It, yeah. It, All of our games have been that I think way. Houston but was it would be stressful. nice. If, yes, it was. It would be nice if Gronk and Brady were going to retire at the end of the season to have that one blowout Super yeah. Bowl Super win Bowl. to be etched that, into Now, that would be the way. And then yeah, if Brady no, or anybody I, else want to hang it up, thanks. Right thanks, until the guys. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks. I, that, that's how I think Brady would like to do it. I would. I think Belichick that's how he always too. wanted yeah, to yeah, do yeah. it yeah. in the last, thanks, like, guys. in the last he, three Super Atlanta. Bowls. If he went, if against Atlanta, he was like, yeah, I'm out. Like, that would have been, all right. Yeah. That's, that's fine. I'm, I have not been in that camp like Brady play forever. It's like, no, he's, we got to, we have to end this because we're getting too fat. We're getting to the point where it's like, all it right, we're going to get another one. Like, yeah, it means, I nothing. Do know, it means nothing. I do know that we do need to end this because oh. I do feel like I'm getting fat. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> yeah, Paul, I have a thought of the day. I have a face-to-facts thought oh, of the geez, day. Oh, jeez, not this. I just want to make sure that people out there, if you go and name your kid Apple or Orange or A, B, C, D, E, you got to take the criticism, okay? You just got to do it. Otherwise, why the heck are you going to name your kid Absolutely. An apple. We'll see you next time on Face the Facts. Bye.